Good morning to all of you, and uh, I thank uh, IP Dome for uh, giving me this opportunity to discuss some of the ideas about the research challenges in biotechnology, especially in industrial biotechnology. When they called me, asked me about uh, 10 days back to give a lecture there in this IPR related uh, topics, I was I told them that I'm not very familiar with IPR, except that as a researcher, we develop some ideas, and then in IIT Madras, we have a cell which goes through all the process of patenting and then developing this uh, IPR rights. But I thought I can still share some of uh, my ideas in the challenges that are there in industrial biotechnology, where you can look to generate these kind of new ideas. And okay, industrial, let me define what is industrial biotechnology. Uh, it involves application of uh, life science to produce chemicals and pharmaceuticals. It employs genetically modified or enhanced microorganisms. It could be animal, plant, or extract from these uh, cells, such as enzyme for the production process. It makes products and sectors such as very diverse sectors like chemistry, pharmaceuticals, food, feed, paper, pulp, textile, and so on and so forth. But also, the important thing is it uses a biological feedstock right, as a raw material for its uh, production. But of course, industrial feed stocks which we use in biotechnology is mainly consists of sugar crops, right? maybe sugar cane, juice or sugar, or later on, let's say, conversion of starch into glucose and using glucose as a source of raw material for many of these products. But it could be oils, like soybean oil or palm oil, or medium <coughs> of our agriculture industries like straw or bagasse, or switchgrass, which are grown specifically for. Uh, deriving this biomass and later on converting this biomass into useful chemicals. But of course the biotechnology process uses fermentation technology. This may be many of you are familiar with. Enzyme engineering and also in plant production producing these chemicals in very large uh, scale. Of course I would like also to point out to you what are the scenario with respect to the biotechnology and biotechnology industry and products. Of course medical biotechnology is sometimes referred to as a red biotechnology is worth about US $25 billion and is well developed. But you can find that now the medical tech biotechnology field is slowing down in, in terms of inventions because it's very difficult to find new products and also finding new products and then putting them into the market after so many trials is becoming an expensive proposition. Of course, the first way of, of biotechnology application was in the medical biotechnology, otherwise called the red biotechnology. Later on, scientists and technologists used the biotechnology in the area of agriculture. Of course, agricultural biotechnology, sometimes referred as a green biotechnology, is established and thriving in many other countries like Argentina, Canada, India, and the US. But what is happening now in the last few years is the application of biotechnology switching, switching to industrial biotechnology. And sometimes it's referred as a white biotechnology because of the chemicals and pharmaceuticals that it produced or in white and so on. But what I feel is that it will, in the next few years, will outperform the medical biotechnology and agricultural biotechnology. So most of the research now is concentrated towards industrial biotechnology, where we use the agriculture or renewable raw material to produce, let us say, energy or some of the useful chemicals or pharmaceuticals or biopolymers and so on. But this is uh, 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 data taken from, we can see, and we have, it's published in 2006. You can see that there is a tremendous opportunity in the area of biofuels, so like the market potential. Um, this is in 2005. This is a projected one, 2010. Of course, 2010 is already over, but we do, I'm not sure whether these targets have been achieved or not. But you can see that the worth of biofuels is about 20, 000, uh, 20 billion euros. And they project that the market potential for the biofuels in the year 2010 or maybe in 2015, around that time, it could be doubled. If the potential could be as high as about 50 billion euros. But the next comes a plant extract, medicinal products which you can expect from plants. Then pharmaceutical ingredients are also expected to double, and so on and so forth, like biochemicals, food and feed ingredients, polychemicals, enzymes, and other products. But you can see that the major uh, turnover that is expected in the industrial biotechnology is going to be in the area of uh, biofuels, and then it may be especially in the bulk chemicals which can be manufactured. Uh, another thing that I would like to point out is that, of course, many of these chemicals can be produced by the chemical process, like chemical route. 
but then slowly and slowly many of these chemical processes are being replaced by the biotechnological process. So if one can develop new processes, new technologies, new IPR to replace some of the chemical processes which are energy consuming and also create a large amount of pollution, if you can replace them by a biotechnological process, right, then you have a, a, a green technology which can be uh, practiced. So you can see that uh, as of today, right, about about 5% of the uh, uh, chemical process are replaced by the biotechnological process. But in the year 2010 or maybe uh, in another few years, about 20% of the product which are already manufactured by the chemical process will be replaced by a biotechnological process. To give an example, some years back we used to make uh, semi-synthetic penicillin. Of course, it's, it's semi-synthetic penicillin production by biotechnological process is many years old, almost 20, 25 years old. Where we used to use harsh chemicals, low temperatures, and the chemical group produce 6 AP, which is the nucleus for the production of the semi-synthetic penicillin. Now it has been replaced by uh, a biotechnological process where we use a simple enzyme and use that uh, enzyme at room temperature. We don't have any harsh chemicals which are used. So you can see that it's more environmentally friendly. So another example of uh, biotechnological process which can replace the chemical process in the, for example, production of uh, fatty acid by splitting of the uh, fats. Where, for example, if you take palm oil and raise the temperature to about 210 degrees centigrade and 10 atmospheric pressure, the oil, and the oil hydrolyzes and splits into fatty acid and glycerol. But when you get the product at that high temperature and pressure, the product becomes highly colored. So then you have expensive method of distilling the product and getting a clean fatty acid, which can be used for the manufacture of the resin detergents and other soaps and so on. But now we can think of a biotechnological process where you use a simple enzyme like this, which can hydrolyze these fatty fats into fatty acid and glycerol at room temperature. And the product separation later on because of the biotechnological process becomes uh, simple. So like that one can innovate. For example, many of the chemical transformations which are done can be done by biological groups. Right? So you can see that.